my dad grew up in southeast um i could literally do this spread take you can't see it on the camera but i could literally take both my hands and touch the room both sides of the room that he grew up in um and this time like in dc he, he was like working a lot of jobs and he's been a plumber electrician uh mechanic etc uh, etc et and he always owned uh, his favorite car was a 67 camaro so he's owned about like three or four of those in his lifetime so like during most of my life he's been building one another one like his i guess magnum opus you know this is it <laughs> the final frontier 67 camaro so like and then like in combined with that um yeah like like we pulled it from the junkyard and everything i remember that day <laughs> um so i was very young so this is probably gonna be a very short story so basically um this is what i remember from that day um I know, so at the time, my dad already had a 67, and like, um, we used to ride around in that joint, but it caught fire, like the engine caught fire one day. So like, I remember it used to have like a burn, like you could see where the paint and everything burned, like on the hood and everything. Um, so then he said he was gonna get another one. So then we pulled this rusty joint from the junkyard, and like, I know it was running, but they had to either pour something either in the engine or the battery. And I feel like it was beer or something like that to like get it started or something like that. And it was just like a bunch of like um, hickey looking white dudes. But they got the joint running, they got it on the trailer, brought it back home. And then like, I don't know, as I got older, like every once in a while he called me to the garage, like, hey, could you help me hold, hold, hold this hood up? Could you help me bleed the brakes, T stuff like that. So when I got my own car, like um, as far as all the maintenance and everything, he started teaching me how to do that. Cause he was just like, hey, you either pay somebody else to do it or you could just do it here, save time and money. And that's what I do. So like I change my oil, I do my brakes, pretty much anything that breaks on my car that I'm capable of fixing, I will fix it myself before I take it anywhere. Basically, this is the um, Vans Old School Undefeated Edition. Um, um, these are daily steppers. Um, in short, I paid a little higher ticket for the Undefeated logos that you can see on like the size and everything. Um, but, hold it right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Unless you want to hold it here. If you hold that's, it all, that's what I was doing. I'm trying to hold the camera right there so you can see how right, it looks. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is the Vans Old School Undefeated Edition. Um, they're a little bit different than regular vans only because of like the markings on the side. Um, but I had to buy these because they have a little bit of historical significance sneaker wise to me. Um, used to be a site called Pick Your Shoes back in the day. And I was probably like in high school. Um, this is ninth grade when I first got there. There was an Asian kid in my class and he was on this sneaker website. And it was all these shoes I ain't never seen before. Was that your same boy that gave you advice when it came to fashion and everything else? Yep, that was the same dude, Shao Mon. <laughs> that was the one that destroyed my fake Lacoste polo in the first period. But it was, it was in front of the homies. It was in front of the homies. It was love. It was love. It wasn't like I was getting berated. Yeah. But <laughs> Which is important. It was a learning. Um, but basically, um, around that time, Undefeated put out a collection of vans, and it was a city pack. And basically, like all like the sporty little U's that you see on the side, like the collegiate U's, they, they did them in like different major city team colors. And I was kind of obsessed with these because they did them in like skate high, so they had like a black and red Chicago one, a New York one, a Seattle one, um, et cetera, et cetera. So like, I don't know, that was just something I really liked at the time, but I never got it because it was a limited collab. And this is when it wasn't a collab every other day, every other week, so. Yeah, those weren't like the do easiest get, thing to get during the do time. You get the notifications with all the collabs that keep coming out. Like Adidas, Adidas hit me up with like seven emails today. They say, "Oh, the rumors are true. Man. The collabs coming out." And it's like, fam, what rumors? I, I, Who was really looking forward to this collab that's coming out anymore? It's so much going on in terms of the world of fashion, and I'm not about to have my notifications on to keep up with it. Cause is like, fashion messing up the sneaker game? Um. No, that's not what's making messing up the sneak game. What's messing up the sneak game is I don't know. I feel like it's been kind of like the commodification of um, fast fashion, mm -hmm. um, and like just how everything becomes a mood board or hey, this is the shoe that you need to get for the summer. It's like people just don't really think for themselves. It's like a lot of articles and things that kind of like lead people this way or lead people that way. So like you know like when you know this season comes in and then like right now you see a lot of people with like adidas sambas um 
I'm trying to think of like the other shoes that people be wearing, but like them other random Adidas with like white and black stripes. Um, but like, I don't know, everything just comes, it's like, I don't know, normal fashion stuff, trends and everything, but like really like everyone making sneaker head or whatever. I never want to really be called a sneaker head. It's much more life than sneakers. I just like getting fly. <laughs> Very simple things of life. Um, but like how that became like everybody's thing now it became like a personality trait so like the average person now is like oh i got a pair of dunks everybody has a pair of dunks everybody got a pair of them black and white dunks like everybody has this like everything that used to be like i guess coveted to a certain extent everybody was like oh well we can keep covering these things or we can make this money so we put everything out there for you um and then like everybody is a sneaker reseller everybody thrifts i hate what they did to thrift stores like i don't know everything you just gotta speak on that you, gotta speak <laughs> on that. you just drop some <laughs> topics I mean, let's talk about what's happening in thrift stores so in short yeah what has happened to thrift so boom uh so back of basically described the timeline for me personally thrifting and just buying older vintage items like this so about 2000 11 13 i could go to where well, i went to school out in baltimore i go to security mall buy as many vintage snapbacks as i want two for 40. brand new i don't know where they got their inventory from they probably just found it in the warehouse i didn't care i was in there eating me and my roommate um but and then like even on ebay i could go on ebay vintage chicago bulls t-shirt vintage whatever t-shirt i could go find it i could pay a reasonable price for it and now everything has become, hey, we need to make some money off of this. So, like, I know everybody loves Sean Witherspoon in round two. Respect to them and what they've done. But that's part of the problem. <laughs> they ruined everything. Like, everything has become about a dollar amount. Um, and I feel like the people that's just trying to get fly suffer in the process. It pulls the people that are just following trends or just trying to find the next new thing that makes them, you know, feel like the thing that they want to be. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you do. But like, I don't know, I'm more about individuality when it comes to things like that. And like, I feel like a part of that was the hunt itself. Like, you know, hey, I want this thing. So let me go find it. It's a journey in that. It's fun in that, depending on where it leads you to. Um, so like, and you never know what story you may get from it. So like, I don't know, going from that to everybody taking all the good stuff out the thrift store and then putting it all in one store and then charging me tax for it. Like, bro, like... I'm not paying you $300 for a Stone Cold t-shirt that I seen on my cousin when I was 13. Got me bent. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, and like, that's just like what it comes down to. I just be looking at stuff. I'd be like, this is a joke. Like, I ain't been doing this. Like, <laughs> so I don't know. Like, you, you can't run that type of game on me in 2024. It's just like, I just recognize and see things for what they are to a certain extent on that front. And then that goes right to the sneaker reselling as well. Because like, now it's just like, um like everyone just like i don't know it got to one to tech savvy like online auction I mean, raffles and things like that those are completely cooked because everyone's made self-automated bots to check out and you know all this other crazy business because at the end of the day everybody just wants to go to goat and stock x and then what happened over time Foot Locker bought goat i think Foot Locker or chance bought goat and then one the one of the other entities bought StockX. And now you see they don't even sell the good shit in the stores no more. You get basics, a couple other shoes, but if you want like the good shit, like all the Jordans and everything. Oh, curses. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you. I'm sorry. Um, but if you want all the good things such as Jordans or what have you, um, you gotta go you gotta um go online. You gotta go to GOAT first. Like um, you know, when the shoes drop and they sell out, the next notification on your phone is GOAT. Like, hey, we know you ain't get them. But we right here, shop up, cop up. Yeah. So like now the game, everything's just like so bent out of shape in about a dollar. Like, I don't know. I remember like we used to like basically like a lot of people I know now too, like in like other cities, like I met them on online forums because we were all trying to get like sneakers and we were sharing knowledge or artwork or what have you. And then like over years, like, I don't know, we just built relationships. So like. I don't know, like I might see you in like a line waiting for a sneaker. You might let me cut in front of you so I can get my size, you know, stuff like that. So like, I don't know, like the whole community building aspect and, you know, all those things that made, I don't know, I guess just being fly wholesome, it's gone. It's just all about a dollar, like at this point. Um, so like just, you know, shopping and copping in general, it's a little bit frustrating these days, but 
we still make it do what it do at the end of the day. And then like basically, um, I wanted to wear these a little bit more sparingly, but like it's a flat foot shoe. So I ended up wearing these like every day gym shoe. I mean, they're Vans, so they're not the most durable things in the world, but they cool and they, I like them for what they are. Can't go wrong with black and gray and white, so they chill. Are you in the van club? Nah, not at all. <laughs> this is my only pair of Vans, bro. Yeah, like, you remember the <laughs> van club skit that uh, Tyler, the creator of them did? No, I, no, not Tyler. Uh, Vince Staples did. Mm -mm. I'm not. Um, I'm not. I'm not as aware of Vince as I am Tyler. It is, it is one of the best commercials you'll ever see. Do you have your cell phone on you right now? Yeah, I got my phone. Um, please. Uh, Bring out your phone right. and go to Chapter One, Vince Staples Van Club. It is one of the best original works in American literature ever. <laughs> Just take this. <laughs> right, um, get back to that. Mutiny on the Converse ship. <laughs> Damn, that is hilarious. Right, so, what's the next shoe you about to touch on? Um, oh wait, actually, let's finish talking about this sneaker. Would you say that's your everyday sneaker? Um, yeah. Okay, so what makes your everyday shoe your everyday shoe? Um, currently, um, about the same thing as the ones on my feet. Mm -hmm. Good flexibility, great flexibility. So, boom. Both of these are the same in that they're flat-footed. My toes could spread out completely in them, and they have a certain... Like, I'm not... Alright, so the Vans, it's not like you're walking on cardboard, but it's not like you're walking on the floor either. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's about okay. These are a little bit better in terms of comfort. They got, I think these might have Nike Air in them, so they're a little bit better. But mm -hmm. other than that, like, you know, they chill. I ain't got, I ain't gonna kill myself if I scuff them or anything. You know what I'm saying? It's just yeah. day to day. And then black and white goes with everything, you know? How would you say you treat your everyday shoe? My everyday shoe? Um, mm -hmm. how, how we looking? We about, <laughs> well, about as good as a van's gonna look, you know what I'm saying? Like, I say my van's cleaner than a lot of people's. That's about it. <laughs> but, like, you know, this you is. Said I'm looking like it was supposed to respond back. <laughs> you said, hey, gang. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not one, um, the shoe is dirtier, it looks better, so it gives it character. No. Yeah. No. I would tell, I will. I can't. I, how do you feel? I, let me, let's keep them honest to taste. Let's keep them on the monetization. <laughs> to get them dirty on purpose. All right. You know exactly what I'm talking about. All right. So if yeah. we're talking about the thing that I think we're talking about. Um, so the commodification of the Air Force One is a crazy thing. Yeah. Um, you remember when they were on sale and then, then it just never went back? Yeah. I remember when the Air Force was like $80 too. Mm -hmm. Or less. Beautiful time. Beautiful time. Um, so I like, I don't know, times. like, so like the Chicago wave hit and folks was wearing forces. I was still wearing forces during that time. So like, I don't know, like, it ain't really changing nothing for me personally. But then I started seeing like how the white on white craze went count on. And I was like, honestly, white on white is not my ministry. You probably will never see me with a pair of all white sneakers. Um, and basically white majority sneakers in general. Like I really don't like them because it's just like I'm buying these and these are going to get dirty. Like they're going to turn yellow and all the ugly things that I don't want on my feet. I'm cool. I have a lot of dirty white sneakers. <laughs> I could show you that I wear at work and I'd be like, I feel like I've betrayed someone. But like, <laughs> it is my work sneaker. I mean, yeah, it's your work sneaker. So it's yeah. whatever. But like, I don't I know. Like. That. I don't know. I I like. I don't got no white force. I can tell you. Like, the last pair of white force I had was probably 2012, and they was all white with a black swoosh. Like I still need that little bit. <laughs> little, drop of color. little 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 drop. Little drop. Little so drop. like yeah. now, just seeing Air Forces in the street isn't like I don't know. Everything kind of got dorked out. How can I explain it? Like so like in height. Do that while you uh, clean sneakers. Cause, okay, that's a bet. Because in the activity around, it's just like, hey man, so what's going on right now? So that's a bet. We chat, man. So like, um, I don't know, like in high school, it was like a tiered cast system of dunks. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> best, best way I could put it is, so like SB's was the upper echelon that was like, hey, you know something, you know, mm -hmm. this one store in the area is gonna get these pair of shoes on this day mm -hmm. and you managed to get you a pair. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? That comes with a different type of report with everybody else at high school. Cause you know, if you know, you know. Um, and then it was the pairs you, that you could get at Journeys that was like 6.0s or like the little Jordan collaboration looking joints. Yeah. Um, and then 
We was making fun of folks for having those. If you had the regular ones, you wouldn't try and do nothing too crazy. That's okay, we understood. But like the 6.0s is like, okay, now you're trying to impersonate SBs. <laughs> so like, I don't know, that was like a mixed bag type thing. Um, and then like now, so like now it's like Nike putting out dunks every week. Nike's, put, Nike's putting out Air Force every week. It used to be like a niche thing. Like now it's just like for everybody. So like, I don't know, it kind of cheapened everything in a sense to me. Like, and not to say I'm one of the people when everybody catch on to it, like, you know, it's whack now. Like I'm a person like, it don't matter if you got it, I'm rocking better than you. Like that's the way I try to think about it. You know what I'm saying? To where it's not, I'm not just being mad because everybody showed up to my party. You know what I'm saying? I only had one pair of dunks all my life, and that was from 2006 to 2008. Mm -hmm. Going from Jersey to DC, mm -hmm. and I used to battle in them when I had dance battles and we was rocking out. Cause you know I'm from Jersey, mm -hmm. and club music was heavy in Jersey, heavy. Slim. From like. You was only two thousands. You was like Wu Tang in the whole nine. Yeah, yeah. Wu Tang, well, Wu Tang actually hit Jersey in the last two years, so two thousand six, two thousand seven, before we came over here. But right. Wu Tang started in Philly. Okay. The dance itself it started in Philly, and then it made its way up to Jersey. Okay. So like the craze and the fact that drill, which originated from Jersey club music is now called drill and it's been the rebrand is crazy because it's like i never thought i've always wanted to see jersey club music succeed mm -hmm. but it kind of sucks when the thing you want to succeed is now associated with violent music yeah um so it is a mixed bag even with that like yeah. i like um like so like the violent aspects of drill like mm -hmm. I, the thing that has become now is kind of weird um like yeah. especially like the up northern drill like mm -hmm. northern it's not even like York. how like cheap keep was making it like yes yeah. it's violent but like at this, it's this still a song but like yeah. you listen to some of that new york stuff they just be like we murdering <laughs> i'm just be like dog all right <laughs> oh, all sound like y'all need to be locked up like like a little timmy can't come outside to play if this is what we on over here but um, yeah, I say that to say, having a first pair of dunks, dunks, I, they didn't mean anything to me. They were just a shoe, mm -hmm. and I was like, they're perfect for battling. And I knew dunks was associated with, I right, you skateboard if you have dunks. Right. And now, it's on so many feet, I, I don't even know if shoes are really a conversation starter now. Now it's kind of like it's got to be really you specific. Gotta, you got to like measure someone out to be like, are they really ahead or they just happen to have the sneaker? You it's even worse now because you could just buy the fake shoes and they look like the real ones at this point. So like because the fake shoes have come so far. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, nah, China been putting their foot in it. Like um, mm -hmm. the way I've been seeing stuff now, it's like you could buy right now. Those I could buy sneakers, by the way. Oh, so this is the Jordan 20 Stealth. Um, in short, this is one of my favorite Jordans of all time. It looks a little rough though, because of course this is like a, a this is an OG pair, so like the suede is starting to go. And I just got these re-glued by my man. Shout out my man's Kanar. Okay. Um, what year are they from? Whew, I want to say 2008, maybe 2007. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Probably like 2008, 2007. Um, yeah. But in short, this shoe was shoe was one of them drops, and I was like, Mama, and she was like. Not this pay week. <laughs> and then we went back to the store, they was gone. Um, this is like my second pair that I had of these. Um, yeah. It's only like a couple of Jordans that I like really like. And when I like them, I like I rebuy them. Like I didn't have maybe like four pairs of Aqua A's, two mm -hmm. pairs of these. Um, maybe like three pairs of Bordeaux 7s. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I don't know, like my taste be real specific. But like I really like these because they was just like, I don't know, they were so futuristic with the strap. I like the details, like the quality of the materials. Like, this is what a almost 20 year old shoe at this point. And then like all the pods on the bottom are like zoom air. So like these joints extra comfortable as well. Mm -hmm. um, like hoop wise, definitely a great shoe. And then like look wise, like if you just want to chill and wear them, like it's an amazing shoe as well. So like, I really, really like these. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna probably try to get another pair of the stealth retros and see if those be better. But I don't like how they changed this part to making it like a light gold inside all the stitching but i can so fix, fix that the shoes that aren't this um the retro of this mm -hmm. um they changed the strap of this so like instead of it being black and gray it looks a little black and gold but of course i could just dye it if i wanted to 
That's why I should have. What the process of dyeing those shoes look like? Um, it's simple. Um, just buy some dye. Um, it comes with like a, depending on what dye you buy, it comes with like a, not like a sponge like this, but it's more of like a, kind of like a cotton ball or like a metal rod. And then like you kind of just dip it and then like let it go across here. And then like, um, it'll evaporate. And then you may have to do a couple coats to get the exact tone that you want. But like, it's a very simple process. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you may just need to hit it with like a heat gun real quick so it adheres. But other than that, it's pretty simple. Um, so what does a day in your shoes look like? A day in my shoes? Mm -hmm. Psh, depends on the day, my brother. Um, so like, if we just talking like a normal work week, um, I could, like I'll just start about how my week started or for the most part. So going to the weekend, I had probably like a 20 page pitch deck to do for um, one of my own, um, my client's movies. Um, and I had about three days to get that together. Not fun. Um, Monday, I had a couple flyers to do, and I got a couple more to do when I leave here. So, like, um, I don't know. I kind of pull, like, a night owl shift and then fall asleep and then kind of wake up early, finish up what I can, go into work. Um, but, like, I don't know. I hate talking about, like, my work day because that's kind of, that's kind of, like, whatever to me. I kind of just exist there and while well, I think about everything else. So, like... <laughs> 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 but in short, um, a lot of walking. Um, I try to take my take my breaks when I can. Get a nice walk around the city. Um, I don't know. Try <coughs> try to take in some sun while I can, especially while this beautiful weather is breaking. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we on the other side, man. So I here. Need that. We the people of the sun. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Call that melanin. Need that. Need that. <laughs> Yeah. So high school. Yep. What year in high school was this purchase made? Oh, I didn't purchase these in high school. I purchased these recently. <laughs> Those are recent? Yeah, I purchased like, because I remember you told me that they just got re-glued. No, okay, so these just got re-glued. These are actually these are the exact pair from like um 2007, 2008 probably. Mm -hmm. Um so I bought these off of eBay maybe like a couple months ago mm -hmm. for like, I don't know, like 90 bucks or so, yeah. something like that. And then I was like, all right, but these look decent. So I was just going to thug them out for what they is. But now the suede seems like it's starting to go. I might probably just end up getting another pair. Ooh. Probably. From eBay or Freshie? Probably either, either or. It depends. I really like the originals because, like, I don't know, the quality is just so much different. Um, Can you tell the texture between the newer sneakers that are made versus the older sneakers? Yeah, I could tell, I could tell just about anything in terms of, like, materials. <clears throat> I don't know, it really changed all the time how the shoe feels on your foot. Like, clearly we see like how like the molds change. Like right now the Jordan 11, it looked like a boot. Like, I don't know why it came out so high every in every capacity, but like, I don't even wanna wear Jordan 11s no more cause how they look, they legit look like boots. Like, and like, I don't know, they just changed the aesthetic of it for me. Um, but like, I don't know, this also goes back to our thrifting conversation because like when I try to go back and find older things like this, mm -hmm. the brand new pairs, it'd be like, I know what I have. It's probably gonna crumble when you get it, but I still want $500. And I'm just like, you're a um, thing I can't say because monetization. <laughs> Kendrick probably has the words that I'm looking for. <laughs> Coming up in this culture, mm -hmm. how important are shoes to the game of a designer? Um, it's a, all right, so as a fashion designer or me as a graphic designer? Or let's, it's let's every, all encompassing? You as a fashion designer, because I know that's really right. needed when it comes to you. All right, so um, as a fashion designer, um, phew, I don't want to say I get dressed shoes first, but just about. Um, like pretty much like i don't know like the uh, yeah the outfit isn't the outfit without the shoes and you know what i'm saying the shoes isn't the shoes without the outfit but like so like it starts there like if my shoes whack like i ain't gonna want to throw nothing on like <laughs> like and then like from there it's like my jeans gotta lay over a certain way over the shoe and then like it's like okay based upon like the proportions or uh of whatever pant that i'm wearing that that affects the shirt so you know it's like a a bottom to top thing um 
And then like, I don't know, like shoes kind of inspire different looks, like how this one is like futuristic opposed to this one is like just a simple thing. So they both apply to different situations. Like, um, I don't know, like this one, of course, is more sporty. So like, I'm probably not going to wear this, like if I was going to the bar or whatever, but like this, I ain't gonna care if somebody spill a drink on these, you know what I'm saying? I can just move around how I need to. <laughs> more more or less. Have you ever owned a dream pair of shoes? See, the thing is, every time I think I own a dream pair of shoes, the dream get much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I could say, uh, I could say definitely I've owned majority if not all of my dream shoes because of course as a geek and teenager every shoe is a dream shoe because you know what i'm saying that's basically the cast system in high school <laughs> you know what i'm saying and then like i don't know it was like tight in high school like i remember the specific day the aqua eights came out because the next week when everybody went to school is monday and everybody was geeking about the aqua so everybody that bought a pair everybody was wearing their joints like a different way or whatever and then like you just walk through all the way everybody like yeah you did it yeah we did it yeah 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 you you, you too yeah yeah we in there we did yeah so sure you got too yeah we in there and so like you know i don't know that was like the good times of it for real for real like yeah definitely <laughs> And then, like, if I had to say, and I don't know, like, so recently with all, like, the money grabbing that Nike and these other entities have been doing, I've just been doing the math. So, like, for example, on GOAT, if I wanted said coveted sneaker or whatever, they're going to charge me, like, three to $500, right? I was like, this is kind of stupid because designer sneakers are this price. And I was like, the materials are better. They, you know, everything about them is better in terms of construction. So why I'm about to give you 300 for these dunks that with technology from 1970 that hasn't changed. So they hasn't improved, hasn't improved. Like dunks ain't no more comfortable than a Vans. You know what I'm saying? They no more comfortable than these ones that I got on my feet. Like that's why I've only had one pair all my life. And like if you wear them joints for a month, like the sole gonna be gone. <laughs> so like, what am I about to do that for? <laughs> So then, like, um, I don't know, I've been looking at, um, like, different brands for a while. Um, I really started, like, it, and then, like, just as my journey, like, in fashion, I started researching um, designers and just, like, what they do and how they think and, like, the philosophies behind their brand. And one that I really, like, came to like was, like, Rick Owens. Um, so this is the Rick Mahomes, um, Ramon um, Jumbo Lace or Mega Lace High. Um... I like this shoe because, like, I don't know, it's kind of cartoony in the proportions, and, like, I don't know, I always like stuff that's, like, different, like, the, um, oh, another shoe that I like is the LeVon Curb, um, it's basically, like, a skate sneaker, but, like, the laces are, like, kind of fat like this as well, and they got, like, different patterns on all the laces, so, like, these is basically, like, a chuck, but, like, I don't know, it's like he took a chuck, Gave it a little, like, I don't know, like, uh, look, gave it a, put it on the Balco Pro program, gave it a little bit of roids, and he was like, I'm going to make this my own thing, which is pretty much what any designer make does. Like, they pretty much, they see a thing that inspired them, and then they try to make their own version of it. And, like, with these, I just felt like, I don't know, like, I've seen them in many different forms and facets, but, like, eventually it was like, okay, now I got to know what's really going on. Why is he charged this much? Why does... Why is everybody covering these sneakers? And then also, why when I go on like websites like Grailed and things like that, why are certain payers that are beat to death going for like ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars? And I started doing my research, and I was like, dang, people just love his work that much. That like, like really, like that. That's how tough he is. Like that's how tough he was doing it. Like people covered things that he made ten years ago, and even if it's beat the crap, they'll still buy it at a high rate just because it's so rare. And like, I don't know, when I got these, they were extremely comfortable. Like, um, some things that like kind of like also like, I don't know, I guess inspired me or necessary that I liked about them was just like certain details. Like, so like the zipper don't annoy you when you're wearing the shoe. This is like a nice little leather strip that they put with like the, you know, made in Italy size and all that. Um, this toe cap, I thought it was going to be like rubber, like the Chuck. This is actually leather as well. Um, 
And then like this is like a canvas pair, but they also come in leather. The the leather pair is a little bit more pricey, but these did what everything that I needed them to do. Like I feel like I really <laughs> see white leather. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then like, I don't know, it holds up pretty well. Like ain't really no scuffs on my toe or anything. Like I try not to scuff them because if I do, I'm gonna be pissed. <laughs> but yeah. Um so I don't know. I try not to wear these because one, I don't want to wear it through the sole, and two, because they're so distinct, I feel like a cartoon character when I'm wearing them with the same outfit all the time. But I don't know. I love them, so I might end up getting another pair. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, inside is leather, and then like I don't know, like so it's been I've been having like kind of a weird like process with like my sneaker collection. Um, in short. I don't know, your feet changes when you start gymming a lot. <laughs> so like oh, they grow and they expand out. Yeah, yeah. And so then you realize not every sneaker is made for it. So like for example, <laughs> when I gym I have to gym in LeBrons. Mm -hmm. But in my everyday life I can't wear LeBrons. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause <laughs> like that means that my effort when I'm gymming is so high that it's like, all right, this is the only one I can handle it. But in ordinary everyday life, I'm not gonna walk to the corner store in a pair of LeBrons. Right. Yeah. Yeah. For you, what is your uh, go-to gym sneaker? Go-to gym sneaker? Mm -hmm. Tried, and, I remember, I remember tried and true. Earlier. One <laughs> and two. <laughs> we need them flat feet for them squats, baby. <laughs> yeah, 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 especially for the deadlifts. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, oh. My bad. It's, no, you good. Oh, it's cool. They ain't, they, we ain't pay, they ain't paying us no way. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't gonna get, they ain't gonna be on the screen too long. <laughs> there we go. So, what are three pieces of advice you would give to someone looking into, looking to get into high fashion when Look, it comes to the shoe game? Don't pay full price. <laughs> <laughs> ever. <laughs> Like, let me not say ever. Um, with fast fashion, it goes one of two ways, especially with more coveted things like um, we're going. Like, if you see it, if you want it, if your heart desires it, buy it. Buy it at whatever price it costs, reasonably so, responsibly so. Mm -hmm. um, don't be trying to eat no ramen so you can be fly. Oh, we got a little, oh, I'm sorry, we got a little precipitation on the mic. He's made for this kind of stuff, he does. <laughs> But, um, so, all right, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Hit me the question again. <laughs> uh, what are three pieces of advice you'd give to someone looking to get all right, so boom. when it comes to shoes? So, if you, so how I was saying, um, if you see something that you really want, um, well, one, do your research on all these products beforehand, so that way you don't overpay for something, and then you think you know what it is, and then it comes in, and it's not what you think it is you know what i'm saying and then you'd be like oh why did i pay all this money for this it's like bro did you look at the materials that this is made of because like for example um i'm trying to think of something dumb like i don't have a specific case but let's just say you see a shirt online mm -hmm. and this is a thousand dollar shirt and you're like dang i really like this shirt and then you buy the shirt and you get mad because you can't wear it in the wild winter time because you ain't read it with silk don't do that <laughs> definitely be well researched before you do any purchasing um different brands have different aesthetics different brands have different material standards um and different brands have different processes so like how like everybody everybody beats this horse to death but like the whole how um Louis Vuitton isn't real leather, it's wax canvas, how um, a lot of these brands, they use wax canvas instead of actual leather. I heard Bottega has great leather, um, actual leather products, but like for some of the other more tenured and um, standing brands, they're not even using real leather. So like, don't like do your research beforehand so you know what you're buying. Um, Cause if you're expecting a thing from a product or expecting a certain amount of quality from a product and it doesn't align with what you're saying, with if it doesn't align with your expectations, then obviously you're going to have a problem. But research prevents that whole problem. Um, the second thing I would probably say is, I mean, you could jump in it full fledged and go hard, but like you may want to piece things out. Um, just in general, with my general clothing brand, I like to buy pieces. I don't like to buy anything that I'm going to not wear next year. Um, don't get caught up in trends. 
that's probably the third piece of advice because fast fashion is ex i mean high fashion and fashion in general is just trendy so don't get caught up in a trend and then buy something that you're not gonna wear next year just because you was like oh this is the hot item right now you know what i'm saying because like i see a lot of that too like um like well especially when i try to buy like older um archive pieces or anything like that like some dude will be like i wore these to fashion week one time and then that was it and i was like okay and that's when i swoop in at half price <laughs> <laughs> that's a bet like you know what i'm saying like hey you didn't really like this thing but i do so um you know there's different ways to skin the cat um but of course i say be well researched and you know do think, go think about things the right way, not the ego way, um, not the what's going to get me attention or what's going to do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. And then I guess that's my fourth piece of advice. <laughs> um, do you ever see anxiety for someone who's trying to keep up with trends? Do I see anxiety? Yeah, like, <laughs> like, oh. Oh, nah, I gotta buy this pair and two months later it's like oh, I can't I can't afford rent this week. Have I seen that? Um, I feel like I've seen it in varying capacities, but of course the ego won't let people project the things that they're actually trying to say. Um because like I don't know, it'd be a, it, fashion is a weird space because so? you'll enter okay, so I don't know. I hate to say this, but like how can I explain it? You meet a lot of normal people sometimes but then you meet weirdos and it's like they're in this for completely different reasons than you um and that's when we get to the people that would actually have anxiety about keeping up with trends and that thing those types of things um in my personal circles i don't really encounter those types of people but when i go out i may encounter some people i've definitely encountered some hype beastie people in the past and then like that's their whole persona like next month we on this this month we on this we done with those oh you're still on that like and then it's just like bro i don't care about other people that's <laughs> that's not what i got into this for like you know what i'm saying and if that's what you got into for that's fine but i know who's really doing the you know war on the inside at the end of the day <laughs> so that's very whatever but yeah i don't know it, it like it's been different varying levels like on the high school level it just be like bro Every time we talking, we talking about sneakers. I want to talk about women and stuff. <laughs> and then like, it's like when you get older, it's just kind of like, you care about this as an adult? <laughs> you worried about, you worried about that? Like, I don't know, like I just had like a lot of like, I don't know. And then like I, these types of conversations, I don't even necessarily like entertain. It's just like, I kind of let, just let you talk. And I'm like, huh, if that's what you want to do, that's what floats your boat. All right, <laughs> but like I don't know, like you can also tell, kind of tell, like different kinds of people um, aren't in. You can tell when people aren't in the things for the same reasons as you. You can also kind of tell when people are forcing it as well. Like I don't know, some people just look weird in certain things, and then like if you ask them about it, it's just like, yeah, you don't really know nothing about this at all. Like, <laughs> like or they'll apply their three years of recent knowledge to your 20 plus years of knowledge and extensive research. And it's just like, yeah, these paths not crossing the way you think they is. <laughs> I think there's a certain amount of exuberance that comes from really being excited for the product and the history. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn to what <clears throat> to celebrate history in your own way. Yeah. So when it comes to either being ahead when it comes to sneakers or when it comes to being ahead when it comes to fashion i think a lot of folks see the price tag and they think a lot of people are in it for the price tag and people like you are actually like actually no i like to sit down and go on youtube and find videos where they show me the process of how they made it like the vineyards that certain products came from that i'm reading a book it. on rick owens like mm -hmm. seeing hey why did i even why did he even make this shoe why yeah. did he even make this brand yeah. what are the principles <clears throat> that even led to this you know what i'm saying yeah. like um and then like in the addition just like um and making clothes like i don't know you start to respect that process more like it's not easy to make a shoe i know a brother um he runs a brand called magnus is greater 
he be showing me like shoes that he be making like every week but he be like he follows that up with i am broke <laughs> i am broke money sucker because like i forgot how much it is just to get a mold done for a shoe but i know it's at least a band just to get the mold of your soul done at yeah. least and this is just for one shoe this is not even a completed sneaker you know what i'm saying and then like once you do that and then you get like a whole run of them joints made of course that's another separate cost but like yeah like i don't know i just i really do respect the process of it and like i don't know i just like that whole design process of making things and it coming into fruition honestly like mm -hmm. if you do anything else what would you do what are we doing right now creating what would you <laughs> say it takes to move something from passion into business passion in the business <sighs> um <laughs> so that's a trade-off um it's a trade-off and that's a conversation you definitely have with yourself at a point in time because like um monetizing the things you enjoy is of course a mixed bag and how that outcome happens for you and i don't know that really tests like your love of the game for real for real like especially like hey do i really like just like this thing it because it's like you could like a thing you'd be good at it but not want to do it for money and then it's like you could still not like doing it for money, but you got to be smart about it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you want to just let this go to waste and just be painting the forest? You, you, might, you might have some kids you got to start paying for. Hey, the world, you know what I'm saying? The world, um, I don't know what it is. I forgot what the phrase is, but like, I don't know. The world, some in some format or way, is going to need your services. <laughs> you see how you got the dark night rising look right there <laughs> i just wanted to show you that's that's like what the setup's gonna look like this this one of the hardest angles that's, that's out there. i thrive off negativity <laughs> 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 so what's what's the trade-off you had to pay to move passion to product how much time we got? <laughs> we have exactly one hour and 40 minutes. All right, that's good. Um, so basically, the trade-off. All right, so this kind of happened to me progressively over time, and I didn't know necessarily where this journey would lead me necessarily. Um, so like literally, I started out doing graphics. Um, I, th I think I spoke on this in our last interview a little bit. Um, my f my school would make the class t-shirts and I'd be like, yeah, this whack. So then I would just make my own, pass the iron out transfers to my friends. And then like, I don't know, from there, it was just like, I wanted to get better as a designer and just get better making art because at my time, at that time, I just wanted to be an artist like in life. Like I could be, oh, if I was the greatest like pop artist of all time, I hate the concept of pop art now because you're just drawing other people's things for the rest of your life and remixing it. So like that ain't my necessarily like passion anymore. But at the time, that's what I wanted to do. Um, but like the clothing thing, um, I don't know, like I did it one year, then I did it the next year. I might have did it three years, two or three years. And then it was just like after that, it was like I kept making art for myself because I wanted to get better and just like, you know, put things out there for people to enjoy. And then, like, I made this Space Jam poster, and then my man was like, you should make that in a shirt. So then I found out how to, put the bread for that, and then I sold out. And then the rest of that was just like, oh, I'm a broke college student. I could do people flyers. I could make t-shirts. I could cuss my sneakers or whatever and, like, make a little extra bread. So then it was just like, I don't know. That, and then it was like, the transition out of college and everything and then you work in a regular job and it was just like I would just remember it was one day I used to work for FDA and then I would go to Banana Republic after work and I was just you know I was because I worked at Banana first like when the harbor first opened and then I was just sitting there on the clock and I was like I get paid nine fifty an hour I just did a flyer in like two hours for 40 bucks yeah, I'm quitting. <laughs> and uh, after that, I was just like, you'd be kind of stupid to not explore this more and see where you could take it to. Because, like, otherwise you got people dictating you what you can make and what you can do in this world. And 
as like a general creative and I guess general rebellious spirit. I ain't trying to be waiting on folks, man. <laughs> and that was literally it. And then like I realized with design, like I could take it to so many other avenues, like such as fashion and everything else. So it was just like, just keep this as the center and just let it expand from there. So I don't know, like it has its good days and its bad. Like, you know, like of course with clients, like you get different types of people, different types of egos, different types of attitudes. But at the end of the day, like I still make it happen and like, I don't know, like I like creating things for people that they can enjoy and be successful with. So um, I guess that's my trade off. Like sometimes I may not like I may not like, you know, what I'm saying the change came in late or whatever. But that's like neither here nor there. That's a part of the game. But like, you know, at the end of the day, like I've seen a lot of people be successful with like the work that I've given them or like they'll grow their business out or what have you. And like, I don't know, like I like having I guess that kind of footprint on the world. Cause like, you know, you know, it's people like in general, like they either one piece of information away or one, I don't know, one aspect of their business away from actualizing that idea that they've been dreaming about. So like the, the fact that people could even trust me with that, you know, like their future or, you know, believe in me to that extent is very humbling. And like, I could appreciate that, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. So, um, yeah, all that just to say, like, I don't know, I guess that's the give and take of it, <laughs> honestly. You know, Going from the FDA to the Nano Republic sounds like a crazy moment in time. Oh, no, I went from banana to FDA, and then I, I was working both at the same time. Then I just quit banana, yeah. I'm saying working both. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I was, tw I was tweaking. It ain't last too long. It lasted probably like a month. I ain't gonna hold you. Cause like I was already working on banana and like it was cool, but like I was like, <clears throat> I ain't really getting no bread here. And then like, I don't know. I just kind of felt dumb after a while just standing around for hours at a time. I was like, dog, I'm gonna go home. <laughs> What's the grace period you had with yourself to learn the business end of moving passion's product? <laughs> it wasn't no grace period. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, if anything, I had a sensei um, in that aspect. Um, I started working at Startup and Artist Graphic Design in Largo. Um, Anthony Waldron was the owner of that business. And literally, I was employed, unemployed, broke during the summer. And this was like the time I was speaking on, which me and my friends, which, me and my own man that I started clothing brand with, was like, we just matching every day, trying to find jobs and you know, what have you. So then my dad was like, yo, get your butt out there and walk into a job with an app and something. And I was like, whatever. But like, yeah, basically my dad gave me an ultimatum, like either you gonna get your ass up or you gonna get your ass out, like <laughs> type deal. So like, I got my happy little behind on, on the road. <laughs> So then I walked in and um, just grabbed a design place. Um, I just started looking up joints in the area. And like I walked in, it's a black guy. I was like, oh So then I walked in, I said, hey, I'm a graphic designer. I gave my resume. I linked up my website. And then he called me like the next day and was like, hey, you wanna work? So then from there, I saw, I got to observe someone run their own business every day um, as a graphic designer. And I got to see what that was like, the ins and outs of that. And then from there, he was teaching me things that I needed to apply in my own business to be uh, like more official on my end. Just like simple things like invoicing, um, creative processes, um, and then laying out like what you get in like the process of everything. And just like, you know, just like all like the little nuances of the game and like, you know, he gave me like playing a game to go on for the rest of my life, honestly. Um, shout out to him for sure. And then like, I was also working with other like local designers as well. Um, um, you know, um, Reggie, um, promo. Yeah. Like him, me and him was working at the same graphic design joint. Yeah. <laughs> so that's bro too. So yeah, like that's another person that I understand the struggle for show. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, through all of, like all of that, like I learned, um, it was a lot. So like even with that, I learned a lot. Um, even like just doing things, you know, because like 
I don't know, it came to the part point where I was also working with like rappers and things like that. So like it was a week. Shout out my um boy out of Chicago, um, the boy Illinois. So like my man's came down here and he needed like a ride to like go to the radio station, like um meet with Khaled and stuff like this. So like I told him I gotta take off work to go do this. So then pretty much I was doing all that and then like it was combined with like I'm not gonna lie, like I hate commuting and my commuting it was not my commute just was not lit at all and then like that combined with like young immaturity like i was just kind of treating it like whatever so then he was just like we like we cool but we got immac immac um and make it believe part ways um like as i'm driving my man's back from the radio station i was like all right cool you know what i'm saying and then from there it's just like okay now you're hitting the ground running um until like i guess i get my next job or whatever so then from there it's just like okay i gotta network you know do whatever i gotta do um but like now i'm like in the process of like i've been in the process of like rebranding myself and like getting back to all of those things that i guess like not makes you but like defines you i guess as a creator are there any concerns for someone who's going through a rebrand from what you've seen? I'm going through two right now. Um, myself and Ghost Dry Goods is no longer um, a thing. So I'm not really going to touch on the details of that, but it was just like some things on the business end. Um, and basically we had to move forward in like a different light. Um, so basically right now I'm working on a clothing brand called Lab 3 um, with my business partner Taurus. Um, and basically it's a, it's a science project so um all the experimenting and like you know things that you've seen us create up until this point um it's gonna be a culmination of those things um so i don't know all the concerns with that is just like you know making sure all the branding is right and everything makes sense in the beginning so that way we're not changing things as things goes on goes along um on the design side it's you know logo colors website um what your you know creator name and how you gonna make the instagram look do you want to make a TikTok? do you want to make free form content everything else that social media is right now <laughs> so you know it's like you know varying levels of um i don't know i don't want to say worry or anything but like you know things to address more so um and like i don't know it's like it's just like a, a care thing honestly it's like hey um and i'm trying to phrase this the correct way it's not like it's standing on business that's what it is <laughs> hey this is me this is why who i am this is what i do is no gray area in between that you know and that's i guess more so what it is at that point um like because like you know like let's say like it applies on both sides so like hey let's say you put out a t-shirt it don't sell as well do you start going in your head oh we need to change everything no keep keep working it keep working it keep working it like you know um it's, <coughs> and like same thing like with design but like i don't know design a little bit different because you're more so selling your skill set less so than yourself um but I want to get to the point to where I'm more so selling myself, like, um, not like selling myself, like, you know, like my butt. It's like, my <laughs> <laughs> <You're selling> my <laughs> no, we're not trying to get no record deals today. It's like, no. It's like, no. <laughs> A minor. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want you to keep that one. I didn't want you. To, I didn't want you to keep that one. I had to make it worse. I think. I think uh, folks who take their passion of products' biggest fear is being consistent across the board. And what I mean by being consistent is it's very easy. It's it's really easy to start a business mm -hmm. in terms of call a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Or if you're not smart, don't call a lawyer. Register an LLC, right? Right, and then just say, "All right, I'm going to spend money, and people are going to buy things." Right. Now, being consistent means whether you have product to sell or not. Do you have a finger on the pulse of what people would like, or what needs to be available mm -hmm. for what's not in the market? Right. And that doesn't even come from 
whether you want it yourself or not, that comes from, are you using your eyes to actually pay attention to things? And do these things bother you because people aren't putting it out there when they easily can? Um, That's what I usually think about. Mm -hmm. But what I do in the mental health and wellness space is very different from what someone like you would do. Mm -hmm. I think our mode of operation is similar, but I think it's more, hey, uh, what we're delivering in the delivery, the expectation is different. Because you, to me, has a much harder job than I do because people tell you what they want in their imagination and you have to somehow get at least 60 percent of what they're looking for correct i would just say like i don't know i look at design and fashion the both way, same way as in mm -hmm. every single i don't like uh, i'm not trying to ego this but <laughs> i feel like at this point i would like people to be like oh this rail he going just let him do what he do but like even to a certain extent, um, I don't know, especially as you get older, the des every single time I step into a design or I make a clothing piece, I'm I have to prove myself. Every single time. Like, um, and like a lot of my job is in trying to connect those dots to get to the 60 or 100% of what someone else is looking for is like that initial conversation. I try to pull most of that out so we don't even have that issue. Um, like when we get to like um, review processes and things, um, cause that can be infuriating. Like I'm-, I'm, I'm the I, review process. Um, so um, in short, like if I do something with someone, like a, for example, a logo, usually I give them a concept package. And then from there, like, let's say I give you three concepts. You pay a fee for three concepts. I come with three concepts based upon what you provided me in terms of information. Um, then I present these three choices to you and these are three avenues we could go down. So like once you see these three, you say, I like the one on the right. Okay, cool. Does it need any revisions? Do you want to change a color here, a font there? Do you want to add this in? You get like a couple rounds of that and then we have the final product. So like I try, I really try to streamline all my processes now. Like honestly, like I don't like if I sense after a while, like Hey, you about to put me down this road of obscurity to where I know you don't know what you want, I'll send your money back. Cause I ain't got the time. When you figure it out, holla. <laughs> Cause like people be trying to have me shoot in the dark and it's like, I can't find what's not there. <laughs> if your idea is not fully fledged out, like why are you coming to me for a logo? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you got more work to do on your end. I can't solve it all for you. And, like, that'd be the other thing, like, when people was, like, clothing brands and stuff. People want me to design clothing brands. It's like, okay, cool. But, like, I have a clothing brand. So, like, I can't just give you all my sauce. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, like, if you have an idea and a concept for your brand, I could brand it out. But, like, if you don't, don't expect me to give. Just give it to you because I can only give you me. <laughs> to a certain extent um of course you know there's outliers to that i'm not gonna say like hey i could just design in one style or anything like that um because like i don't know like right now i've been doing a lot of work with um the hoop buzz um i designed like a lot of um au um jerseys and stuff like that so like his brand kind of like like he know his he know my art style so he'd be like sicing it like yeah this guy like you know w your look but at the same time, everything looks like his brand. Like when you look at it, like everything is the hoop buzz. Like everything looks like his brand. But like, if you looked at it and you see my work, you probably be like, "Oh, bro, did that?" Like type thing. So, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a little bit of give and take with everything, honestly. <laughs> did you learn? Did you come into the game with good boundaries, or did you have to learn now? Sometimes my boundaries just, was trash, my guy. Sometimes you gotta just refund them and tell them no. You know my boundaries was trash. I had done a lot of hard learning. Um, one of the worst situations I got got in, um, uh, I had a local coach um, at a very popular gym in this area. He requested some flyers from me to get printed. Um, so I did the design, I did the flyers. On my way to him, he blocks me on his phone because he ain't had a bread. So, yeah. I, yeah. You go through some shit in this game. People be wilding. 
I'm sorry, I didn't mean to curse. <laughs> I'd be too comfortable with you, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'd be getting a good pocket and I'd be like, dang, I'm still a heathen. <laughs> I'm still a heathen. We backsliding. <laughs> the Lord know my heart. <laughs> YouTube, do not frown upon thee, please. <laughs> That's hilarious. Please, Lord, know my heart. He knows I'm a good one. <laughs> I try. I try. <laughs> I swear, there's still some good in me. Please, there's still so much you know I ain't mean that like that, man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> how, how do you go about following up on bad business? Or you just don't? Um, God is amazing. That's all I'm gonna say. Anything that I thought I lost, I got it three times that within three business days. I swear to you not. Always three business days? Or less. I promise. What's the importance of having good relationship with consistent business? Um, I mean, that's simple. That goes everything from the streets to corporate. People like working with people that they like. <laughs> and that's very simple. Uh, yeah. I'd rather have cohesive relationships where we're actually working together opposed to, or more so like you trust me and you're commissioning me opposed to, hey, you're hiring me for a job. Cause like a job is just like one hit off and then I may not see you for a year and some change. But like the people that I consistently work with, I love those relationships. Cause it's like, I actually like, I don't know. It's like, I'm like an internal part of the business. So like, it's like, we kind of have this thing flowing already. Like I know what to look for. I know what the things you're looking for and I'm going to help you grow. So like, you know, as I pick up on my skill sets, I'm going to try to implement this into your business, you know, that type of thing. So like, I don't know, like, um, I really like the long standing relationships that I have. Like I have, like it's people I've been doing business with for at least 10 years. Um, and like, I don't know, it's been nothing but love. Um, cause they, cause these are also the relationships where people understand my perspective as a designer. Like, Hey, yeah. people don't be paying when they supposed to, Hey, People be messed up, but I know you, so I ain't gonna be that person. Yeah. <laughs> and I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then like relationships um, are better like that because then we could also be more transparent in the moments where there are man, misunderstandings, so there won't even be misunderstandings. Um, and that's the other thing that I like about it. It's like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you will understand if like, you know, something happens to my laptop or, you know, like, hey, you ain't heard from me a couple of days or whatever, but you know, I'm gonna be still working on your project or something like that. Like, not necessarily like now, but like in the past or whatever. Like, I don't know, like, I really like those cohesive relations, but like, I like that in every facet of my life. I like, like if it don't flow, it don't go. Like, honestly, like. <laughs> don't flow, don't go. Yeah, it, it simply don't like, I don't know, like, like, cause even like when I've tried to retain clients or what have you, it's just like, you, 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 you just start doing math on things. Like, you just be like, dang, I'm unhappy for this amount. I could just enjoy my weekend. And as you get older, that's what it comes down to. I can go see my mama or I could be doing your little flyer for this little bit of bread that I know you ain't going to have for another two weeks. I'm going to see my mama. <laughs> I have a family meter that uh, my partner's aware of. Mm -hmm. If I really like the people that I'm doing work with, I'm always going to ask about your family and how they're doing. Right. If I don't, I'm just going to keep it to the topic, and that's all we're ever going to discuss. And that's it. <laughs> right. Like, hey, how's the family doing? How even You don't even got to be married. Hey, how's your girlfriend doing? Mm -hmm. You guys been good? I know we was chatting mm -hmm. about this and the third. Right. Bet, bet, bet. Uh, you guys working on the new house? You know, the market's bad out here, but you mm -hmm. got some good deals? Okay, I bet. You need me to reach out to some folks? Cool. Five minutes that. Talk about business. Five minutes after. Hey, remember, we still got to do the sit down for lunch. Even right now, what I'm trying to get back into, and I think coming out of the pandemic, that's kind of hard. I want to do a sit down with someone just to have lunch. No cameras, no nothing. Just like to chill. Right. And get back to like, ah, what attracted us to each other business wise outside of the business and yeah like i'm trying to get back to that myself because i realized like i don't know like 
I'm actually like cool with these people. So like sometimes I might just want to talk about normal stuff instead yeah. of just just like you know when you need me, but type yeah. deal. But like at the same time, like you know that's a two way street. I'd be busy, and then like I have friends outside of my clients. So like, yeah. and then I got a social battery. That joint yeah. is very small. <laughs> 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 I'd be like, do do I have enough to like have a good time at lunch and not think about the bill? Yeah, because yeah. like you know, I do have to put money to the side for other future things, and it's like you know, I right now we're working on how do we keep money separate from your personal expenses when it comes to the relationships because people as you said before work with you because they like you it always starts there like, yeah i tell most folks if you see me stay at a place for a long period of time whether the business succeeds or not can i like the people can i like your jokes can i like your insults can i like your topic range can i like your voice if i can do all four of those things right we will go far if i can't i should put myself in another position to not be here all right what Simple. other pair of sneakers you got Oh, um, that's it for today. Oh, wasn't there four pairs? You said there was I mean, three. I got three. I got these on my feet. There you go. That's, <laughs> then I got these the on my feet. Right there. Yeah. Oh, we gonna clean the ones on my feet? Yeah, All right, but right on the feet. <laughs> we gonna do the stack on the on the. Uh, I need to desk. clean these. I actually have a couple of photo ideas we can do after that. All right, that's what. Wait, what you just say? You said you needed to. I needed to clean these joints anyway. Okay, bet. <laughs> I just Perfect. I just wa I just wash and wax my cars so like I got a bunch of wax all over these joints. Oh, so you do everything by hand even for the car? Man, I do everything. Okay. Is that a habit that was instilled with you in you from like early age or um, that's yeah. just who you are by design? Um, both. Um, in short, my dad grew up in the southeast. Um, I could literally do this spread take you can't see it on the camera but i could literally take both my hands and touch the room both sides of the room that he grew up in um and this time like in dc he, he was like working a lot of jobs and he's been a plumber electrician uh mechanic etc uh, etc et and he always owned uh, his favorite car was a 67 camaro so he's owned about like three or four of those in his lifetime so like during most of my life he's been building one another one like his i guess magnum opus you know this is it <laughs> the final frontier 67 camaro so like and then like in combined with that um yeah like like we pulled it from the junkyard and everything i remember that day <laughs> um so i was very young so this is probably gonna be a very short story so basically um this is what i remember from that day um I know, so at the time, my dad already had a 67, and like, um, we used to ride around in that joint, but it caught fire, like the engine caught fire one day. So like, I remember it used to have like a burn, more, like you could see where the paint and everything burned, like on the hood and everything. Um, so then he said he was gonna get another one. So then we pulled this rusty joint from the junkyard, and like, I know it was running, but they had to either pour something either in the engine or the battery. And I feel like it was beer or something like that to like get it started or something like that. And it was just like a bunch of like um, hickey looking white dudes. But they got the joint running, they got it on the trailer, we brought it back home. And then like, I don't know, as I got older, like every once in a while he called me the garage, like, hey, could you help me hold, hold, hold this hood up? Could you help me bleed the brakes, T stuff like that. So when I got my own car, like um, as far as all the maintenance, everything, he started teaching me how to do that. Cause he was just like, hey, you either pay somebody else to do it or you could just do it here, save time and money. And that's what I do. So like I change my oil, I do my brakes, pretty much anything that breaks on my car that I'm capable of fixing, I will fix it myself before I take it anywhere. Um, and then like, yeah, all my uncles, like my, I had an uncle um, growing up, my mother brother, like he used to, um, he used to sell dope and he used to street race at night. Um, and then he also had like track days where he'd go and like um, race cars and work on them. But like, awesome. I'm, I, remember one, I remember one day at my grandparents' house, they swapped the, like a Chevy Nova engine into like a old Chevy S10 pickup. Like I, like, I don't know, like I'm really just used to like, I don't know, like cars in general. Like I'm used to being around that type of stuff all it's the time. As cool colors you can get. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think a lot of those values of being hands-on has translated into all the work that you do now? Yes, by far. Um, I definitely see my parents' influence on me in that aspect. My grandmother used to, um, like, I used to get babysit at my um, grandmother's house in the southeast. 
And like, she was like, she used to babysit all like the local kids. So like when I came over, like I would either like fake babysit them or me and her would, she like while she would babysit them, she gave me like some arts and crafts stuff to do. So like, I guess like that's kind of what helped curate the cur um, creative aspect a little bit. Cause like, I did, like the main thing I remember is like this one day, I was like, I want to make a car. So she gave me like a cardboard box. I started grabbing some plates, some saran wrap from my windows. <laughs> I made a car. <laughs> and I was sitting in that joint. <laughs> and like, I don't know, like, I guess stuff like that always like kept my brain pumping. And I don't know, like, I feel like a lot of those things just carried over to my life. Like just simple pr principles of like, if you take care of it, it'll take care of you, um, you know, just, I don't know, like, you know, don't be scared. Just get in there. Like, things ain't necessarily as complicated as what everyone else makes them. You got to see things for yourself. <laughs> when it comes to how quickly you clean your shoes and your kicks, mm -hmm. is that a habit to always clean things efficiently and quickly? Um... Yeah. Because you said you said earlier, you said, hey, man, just just let you know, I'm going to do this quick. Well, one. I watched you do it quick for all of them. So, one, I yeah. clean my shoes all the time. <laughs> What's your so, like, cleaning shoes? Um, so, like, for the most part, I be at work. So, like, I'm wearing these most days. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm really not cleaning these. These advanced. These probably, like, this sole probably wear out in the next couple months. And then mm -hmm. I throw these joints in the garbage. And then, like, this. Does deserve to be cleaned? Um, I'll clean. I clean these joints. Um, like I said, I respect them because they was an undefeated pair. I wanted to hold them a little bit longer than what they did, but then turned into the daily shoe. So it is what it is at this point. Are Vans the pair of shoes that no matter how you toss them, they'll always land on their feet? I have no clue. I, I think I think those are Vans. Yeah, like no matter how you toss them up and down, when they land on the ground, we'll, we'll test it out after. When they land on the ground, they always land on the feet. And I think it's the way they design the weight in the sneaker. I can see that. They really like heavy at the bottom. I can see that. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Yeah. But in general, like, so like I clean, I probably, so like, it depends on like how often I'm wearing the sneaker as well. So like if I wear them like two, three times, more than likely I'm going to clean them that Sunday yeah. or like a random, or like after I wear everything like two to three times, like a random Sunday, I'm going to just bring everything out in the, in the bathroom and clean it all. Mm -hmm. So like I don't know, I try to keep my shoes looking like they out the box fresh. So like I got, I got like this things and stuff my shoes with. Like when I go home, I put them in boxes, stuff like that. Um, so like I don't know, I just try to take care of my stuff. What <laughs> three pieces of advice you'd give to someone looking to take care of something that they value? Um, psh. we going metaphorically or? <laughs> <laughs> It's up to you, man. Woo. Um, cause like that's kind of a deep root question, depending on which way you look at it. Shout out to Juice for the smoothie. Anytime, man. Anytime. That's what I do. Smoothies. I'm actually thinking uh, for next year, for all the interviews that I do after we move, I want to have a little mini fridge mm -hmm. that just has, uh, you know, like when you go into like 7-Eleven, they got the fridges and you just see the windows with everything in front of you. Yeah. And it's just going to be a fridge full of smoothies that people could just take mm -hmm. before we start interviews and they just drink smoothies as we talk. Hmm. That's solid. I definitely raid the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got that carrot mm -hmm. I love some carrots. All right. All right. But taking care of things that you care about. Mm hmm. Hmm. Okay, so... I'm going to start this with the general principle that I spoke on. Um, if you take care of things, they take care of you. Um, and a lot of that goes towards, um, you could look at that as preventative maintenance. Um, you could look at that as, I don't know, a rainy day fund. You could look at that in a myriad of different ways. And they also with the decisions that you make, you know, avoiding po certain possibilities or just eliminating those possibilities from the table before you, you know, venture on into something. Um, of course, consistency, because like, you know, if you do time with anything, anyone, you got to be consistent. <laughs> And, you know, like sometimes we fall off, but at the same time, like you guys still maintain, you know, the effort that got you here in the first place. Um, and that could also go to business or what have you, you know what I'm saying? The things that originally got you here are the things that are going to keep you here, you know. 
Um, and uh, if we're just talking like sneakers and things like that, um, do your research. If we're talking about just taking care of sneakers and clothes, it's a thousand videos on YouTube of people cleaning every and anything. You can watch 30 videos of somebody cleaning a pair, of, a specific pair of Jordan 1s if you're confused. If you don't know what to do with suede materials, you don't even gotta watch the sneaker person. Don't even watch the sneaker person. Go find the little Batman in Italy's YouTube channel that's only clean, cleaning suede moccasins and then find out how he cleaning suede. You know what I'm saying? Because otherwise, you just listen to the guy from Foot Locker trying to sell you something. So, I don't know, like, it's because it's different ways to go about research, too, because it's levels to everything. Um, and then, like, if you try and do something at your greatest capacity, you got to see who's doing it the best. <laughs> um, yeah. When you think about the way you take care of your everyday sneakers, mm -hmm. How does that reflect in how you take care of yourself? Um, how do I put it? Um, I try to live by health as well. Um, I'm not gonna act like I'm perfect. Um, but I definitely do try. Um, I try to stay active. I try to go to the gym at least three, four times a week. Um, I try to make sure what I put in the body, when my body is the right things. Right now, I'm kind of at a point, especially because like. I realized like you could piss a lot of money off on snacks and things and then like I realized like once like probably like a year after I moved out of my parents house I was like yo I don't even like snacks snacking for real like I don't be snacking like if it's not like a solid square I'm probably drinking water or a protein shake in between but like other than that like I don't really care like I don't miss it like and then like certain things is just trade-offs like what do you value like I didn't want cavities when I was young. I got like one filling and I was like, what is messing up my teeth? And then I'm drinking like six sodas a day. I was like, oh, I started doing research about soda. I was like, oh yeah, this garbage. It's just syrup. So then I was like, all right, cut that out. I ain't been drinking that for years. Um, I be caving on the Wendy's here and there. I ain't gonna hold you. I be caving, I be caving. But like McDonald's, that's a no, no. You know what I'm saying? I try, I try, I try. Um, but like all that goes back to the same thing. Cause like, um, somebody once told me long ago, like, you can't run a business and be unhealthy at the same time. Yo, that those things don't go together. Yo, I, I, <laughs> literally, I literally work out for that. Like, yo, you gotta remember, right? Before the pandemic, right. just just out the gym with a deadlift. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you house. was going crazy. Right? But, but I had pro tryouts. Right. So it's like, I, I knew... You have to be as crazy. No, you have to be crazier than your competition. Right. But then I took a break in the pandemic, and like that was the first time in my life while working out and being an athlete, I took a break. So you gotta imagine, you're talking about a little bit under 15 years of just going hard, yeah. and then you finally got a moment of silence. And what I realized was I started hearing all the injuries that I had built up that I know about that I've had like surgeries from Yikes. in my head. Say, hey, man. We're not allowed to not work out. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be honest with you. Yeah. Your lifetime accomplishment is going to be to be the strong person that you uh, are. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so you wouldn't know. <laughs> 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 you just come up with a routine. Learn to love it because this is who you are now, right? Right. Which is good because like, I actually do enjoy working out and stuff that I do. But a lot of folks... This dude heard about like all the numbers and everything that I did back in the day and all this other stuff. And he was like, you should do a strong man competition. And I said, no, nah, I'm not interested. Mm. He said, well, why not? If you're there, I said, you have to enjoy the process. I was like, if you're not, if you're not willing to enjoy the process, then you're, you're really just wasting everyone's time that's in the room, including your own. Because that means that you're doing it because other people told you to, not because you want to. Right. He was like, but, but you have the ability to. I said, yeah, ability doesn't matter if you don't want to do the thing. Ben Simmons had the ability too. Yeah. And you see where he at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, you're, this is a day in my shoes.